tens of thousands of comments on YouTube and on Twitter and so forth, and tried to, uh, many of which I find almost unbearably infuriating, which is a very interesting reaction. I don't think it's unique to me. And the reaction I have often is something like, when an anonymous troll posts something particularly caustic, I think, if you dared say anything like that to me, to my face, even once, there would be so much trouble surrounding you immediately that you can hardly imagine it. But online, you know, there is this social distancing phenomenon that's well known to social psychologists and personality psychologists that if you're, even if you're in your car and thereby uh, sheltered, let's say, from immediate interpersonal feedback, you're much more likely to act in a self-centered and self-aggrandizing manner because you miss that immediate feedback. And there's absolutely no consequence whatsoever to behaving in a narcissistic and self-centered manner online, as far as I can tell. And um, then that tends to promote, especially for people who are rather disinhibited to begin with, that promotes a kind of self-aggrandizing narcissism that is ab would be absolutely unthinkable in real life. And then you wonder, well, if that's happening all the time online, how much of that becomes a habitual mode of thought? Well, and especially you'd think it would free people who are prone to have those proclivities to do that as well. And I also think that that's more true of people who harbor a fair bit of resentment and who are relatively cowardly. Because if they're resentful, well, then they're going to be looking for the opportunity to, to use derision in particular. Like I've noticed on YouTube, the markers for pathological behavior seem to me to be quite clear. The first marker is an anonymous account. And I think those are appalling. The social media companies should have know your customer laws like banks do, and they should put the damn anonymous trolls Absolutely. in their own pit of hell. You know, and shouldn't be mixed yes. in with the real people. And then often the worst anonymous accounts have a demonic sounding name. And so there's something <laughs> about the name that is is derisive or often literally demonic. They, they pick some moniker that's appalling in, in the most me fundamental metaphoric way. And then they tend to use derisive nicknames and acronyms like Laugh Out Loud or LMFAO or WTF. There's these, this casual use of derision and contempt. You know, there's a, there was a great study done, I don't remember who did it, unfortunately, looking at predictors of marital breakup as a consequence of interpersonal interaction between the pairs of a couple. And the best predictor of imminent marital breakup was eye rolling. So the yes, manifestation of contempt. What's that? John Gottman. Yeah, that's right. Gottman, Gottman. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's that it's that use of contempt in particular, you know, and I also, I read Hitler's table talk. And that's a collection of his spontaneous speeches at mealtimes aggregated by his secretarial staff over about four years. And I was looking at descriptive uh, term usage, trying to understand his thought processes. And it's pretty damn obvious that Hitler wasn't afraid of the Jews or the other people that he conducted genocide against. His fundamental um, emotional attitude towards such people was derisive contempt and disgust. There's something particularly toxic about disgust and contempt. And there's something about online commentary in particular that really brings that forward. And then you have the other problem I would say too, which is that in some sense, every, the online world, and th this is the world that the IGN kids are immersed in, is a, it's a faux celebrity world, right? Because everyone online in some sense is a celebrity of different proportions. They have their followers, they have their fans, let's say. And then the whole enterprise seems to um, facilitate image management. I know on, I think it's TikTok, there are real-time facial feature adjustment filters so that you can make, this, girls use them more than boys for obvious reasons. You can make your lips plumper you, and redder, you can make your eyes bigger, you can anim yourself, you can, you can cutify yourself, to, to coin a, a terrible term, and you can do that in real time. And all of the, or much of the reinforcement pressure seems to be directed towards attention seeking. And then that combined with the fact that there are almost no 
consequences for misbehavior seem to produce a pretty, first of all, a toxic social environment, but also one that doesn't follow the same rules as actual face-to-face -face contact, which I think is the bigger danger. I studied antisocial behavior in boys and girls, and boys, they're pretty much straightforward juvenile delinquents when they're antisocial. They, they kick and, and, and fight and, and steal and break rules, and it's a lot of externalizing behavior, right? A lot of acting out. But girls who are antisocial, they use reputation destruction and innuendo and gossip and backbiting, and they can be unbelievably good at it, and everyone knows that. I mean, Mean Girls, that famous movie was about precisely that. And the thing about social media that's, one of the things about it that's quite interesting and disturbing is that female type antisocial behavior scales brilliantly on, online. Because it can be done behind the scenes, it can be done anonymously, it can be done with that derisive contempt, let's say. And the consequences are vanishingly small. And so I can imagine that teenage girls who are often subject to bullying by other girls are now subject to bullying in a way that's much more subtle and much more devious and much more continuous because that's the other thing that happens to young people now is, can you imagine being a teenager where nothing you ever did would be forgotten? We did uh, psychometric analysis and, and looked at the psychometric analysis of thought patterns that loaded on trait neuroticism. And so, mm. as you know well, but I'll explain to everyone else, Trait neuroticism is something like your baseline level of the proclivity to experience negative emotion, like depression and anxiety. And one of the things that's quite striking is that self-conscious thoughts load so heavily on neuroticism, they're almost indistinguishable from emotions. And so it looks like if you're self-conscious, if you're thinking about yourself, you are instantly miserable. And then if you're a teenage, then it gets worse for teenage girls, I think, because we also know that teenage girls experience a spike in neuroticism that's attendant on puberty, and that their self-conscious concerns tend to be particularly body-focused. And that's probably a consequence of the fact that females are evaluated more stringently as a consequence of their appearance, particularly when they're young. I mean, men are evaluated on the basis of their performance, let's say, but women tend to be evaluated more on the basis of their appearance. And so you can see that's a perfect storm for young girls because they hit a negative emotion peak at 13. Now they're susceptible to bullying. They're extremely self-conscious about their bodies. And then the entire online world is a place to display for public it's like the old nightmare that people have about public speaking is being naked on a stage. That's really, in some real sense, what the social media world has done to teenage girls.